Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with a story about a driving showdown that turned into a classic case of follow the follower. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Follow me to my house. I'll follow you back. Driving home yesterday and I needed to change lanes so I could make a right turn in a couple of blocks. I checked my mirror and hit my turn signal. Well, the guy that was back a couple car lengths speeds up to try and block me on the left lane. Sorry, but I'm coming over. The guy lays on his horn for half a block. I laugh and wave. I even used all my fingers, not just the middle one. So the guy follows me for the next mile and turns into my neighborhood behind me. Not unusual since there are some apartments there. He follows me for a couple more turns and I start paying attention. The last two turns he would only make if he lived on the same street. Still, I have a couple neighbors that drive the same kind of car, so not too worried. When the guy drives past my house to the end of the block and turns the corner, I know he was just effing with me. Well, crap, now he knows where I live and what I drive. I know nothing other than it's a guy driving a Subaru. Narrows it way down, right? So I back out of my driveway and back around the corner. Sure enough, here he comes around the block and back out of the neighborhood. At this point, I decide to give the guy a taste of his own medicine and start following him. He jumps on the main road and heads north. I follow the guy for about five miles to the next town. He's driving okay, and I'm keeping a safe distance, but on his tail enough that he knows I'm there. I'd been watching him gesturing with his hands and swerving a little, not too bad though, so I figure he's talking on the phone. I am hoping he don't have a bunch of friends waiting wherever he's headed, but he also has a temp tag and I couldn't identify a thing other than the make of the car, so I keep going. He heads through a light and onto Main Street, and at that point, I know he's on the phone with 911. Perfect. Sure enough, the guy pulls up to the police station and into a parking space. I roll up right next to the guy and hop out to go talk. He won't even look at me, so I stick my phone camera in his windshield and take a picture of the dude. Just then, a cop walks up behind me and starts asking me why I'm following the guy and videoing him. Two more cops show up and start asking me a bunch of questions too, so I explain that he followed me first. They go over all the things that could go wrong with me following someone, so I go over all the things that could go wrong without me following him and that I was glad he came to them. Because now, even though I don't know who he is, they do and he knows it. So now I don't have to worry about him coming by my house later. They were all telling me how shook up the guy was, that he was pretty scared, lol. I told them to let him know that following people to their homes probably wasn't the best activity for him. They agreed. Bravo. Maybe next time he'll think twice about following someone home. And for what? Because he didn't want you in front of him? And our second story. Miss delivering your packages? Let's get that fixed. I work at a small town post office with over 2,000 residents, so we actually have a lot of customers and are extremely busy most of the time. To be honest, I have a ton of stories involving wacky customers, but I'll save those for another time. This particular incident happened about a year ago. We have one customer, out of many, who's a complete shopaholic. We'll call her Barb for this story. She buys and buys, getting at least one to two packages every day. Our carrier at the time would take the packages and deliver them to Barb either in her own mailbox or the parcel locker assigned to her. Barb, however, was extremely lazy and would hardly ever check her box. Fast forward a little bit and suddenly Barb starts calling the office saying that the carrier is misdelivering packages. Barb spoke to both me and the postmaster and we both sent the carrier many times just to confirm Barb was in fact getting her packages. One day she calls and chews out the postmaster. I don't know exactly what was said, just that she yelled a lot and eventually said, Stop misdelivering my packages. So that day, my beloved postmaster says, Understood, we'll get that fixed right away. And from that point on, Barb would now be receiving slips notifying her that she has packages to pick up at the post office. And boy, was she not happy about this. It was also funny to see the few times the husband came in and do a face palm when I hand him almost 20 packages. I'll still never forget the time Barb came in one day and got her packages and said to me, you know, just because I had a few words with the postmaster doesn't mean you have to stop delivering. 
And I just looked at her, smiled, and said, well, we wouldn't want to be misdelivering anything. I take it that the laziness was her refusal to check her box before deciding that a package was not delivered or misdelivered. I bet she has lots of friends at Amazon, too. And our next story. I guess I'm an a-hole for taking away my internet. I live in a commercial building that's been converted to apartments. It's a pretty small place, six to seven units total, not 100% sure about the rooms upstairs. The apartment is really nice, and the landlord doesn't charge what he could get away with. Because of this, he often ends up having to evict people that move in for two to three months and just quit paying rent. Anyway, that's besides the fact. When I move in, nobody really had internet in the building. One guy did on the end, but he was an MMO addict and had a hardwired internet only. I got internet with Wi-Fi within a week from moving in. Needless to say, almost immediately, neighbors started asking for the password. Some would offer to split the bill. I declined for several reasons, and others would beg to just use it for a day or two. It got really old real fast, but I never gave in. One day, however, I noticed that the couple I lived next to were both on their phones. They'd mentioned not having service another time, so I realized they must be on my internet. The same people had offered to pay me to use it before, but I declined because I knew I'd never see more than one payment. So I get on my phone while sitting outside and pull up the router and change the password. Quickly, I notice that they're frantic on their phones. One of them says, is something wrong with our internet? I chime in that, no, I just changed the password on my internet, knowing darn well that they don't have internet. The guy started laughing because he knew he was busted, but it wasn't a huge deal, though I was annoyed. The woman was quite the opposite. She was like, well, I need the internet back so you can tell me the password. I refused. Then all night, she kept saying crap like, God, why are you being such a jerk? Or can't I just use it tonight? The next day, a Saturday, she knocked on our door first thing in the morning. I need to get on the internet because I need to call her son's school. Oh, you can use my house phone for that if you'd like. Well, I need to talk to her teacher on Facebook, so... Over the next week, she kept coming up with bullcrap, asking to use it for just tonight, or outright demanding the password. One of the last things she said was, I'm actually pissed off that you changed the password to my internet. I told her that I was pissed off that she was freeloading on my internet after I refused her money to use it. Turns out they paid my stepson $5 to get the password for a minute and were on it for a few days before I realized... Now I don't even tell him the password, and if he wants to use it with a device, he can hand it to me to enter it. Anyway, my internet isn't communal internet, and you don't deserve it just because you need it. LOL. If you have multiple neighbors who want to split the cost of internet, you should introduce them to each other. Then they can screw each other over. And our last story. No, you can't use my pool. Two months ago, due to a work promotion, I had to relocate to another city. All accommodations were paid for, housing included. The company rents a nice place for me in the vicinity of the branch office. It's a modern, minimalist two-story house, which I will be going to live in for the next 10 months. It's privately owned and comes with a spacious front yard and a small oval-shaped swimming pool in the spacious side yard adjacent to a gazebo where I usually hang out on my days off. Sometimes my colleagues come over to use the swimming pool, which I have encouraged them to because why not? The owner of the house used to live in the newly built house for a couple of years before he and his family moved to another city to accommodate their kids' education since they would be going to university there. Everything was great and went smoothly until a few weeks ago. It was my day off and I was taking a nap when I woke up to loud splashing and people laughing and talking. Assuming it was probably just my friend showing up unannounced and enjoying their Sunday afternoon, I went back to sleep. But when I woke up a few hours later, I was shocked to find empty cans of Coke, cigarette butts, and food wraps strewn about on the ground near the gazebo. I rang my friends up to remind them to pick their crap up next time before leaving, but they told me they had no idea what I was talking about since they hadn't come over that day. I resorted to random guessing, the neighbors had trespassed, thinking I was not home. But since I had no proof, no security camera around the side yard, and had no idea who the culprit was, I decided to wait and see. The following week, when I returned home after picking up lunch, I found five teenage boys hanging out by the swimming pool. 
To say I was surprised is an understatement. I asked them who they were and what they were doing at my place, and they told me they're the family of the owner of the house, and he told them they could use the swimming pool whenever they wanted. I was shocked beyond comprehension. I told them that this house is being rented to me, and the rental cost has been paid fully, and the lease agreement is not even nearing the end of its terms yet. I am the rightful owner of it, at least for the next 10 months, and responsible for it, and I really don't appreciate them just showing up unannounced like that when I'm supposed to have the house for myself legally, according to the lease agreement. One of them told me, ask my brother then. He told me we can still come over and use the swimming pool. We won't go into the house or touch your stuff or anything like that. It's just the swimming pool. Apparently, they live in the same neighborhood and have access to the backyard through which they get to the swimming pool because the owner gave them the key to it. I insisted that the house come with the swimming pool and they have no right to just barge in whenever they feel like it. And he insisted I call his brother, which I did later that night after they left. Much to my annoyance, the owner told me that, yes, he has given permission to his family to use the swimming pool. I have the house all to myself. Yes, they won't get inside, but they're free to use the swimming pool. Nowhere does it say specifically on the contract that I have full temporary ownership of the swimming pool or that he or any of his family members is not allowed to use it. Like his brother had said earlier, it's just the mother effing house. I asked him why he didn't mention this to me or my manager before we signed the lease, because if he had, I would have made sure we wouldn't be renting his place. He calmly said he didn't think it would be a problem at all. I was fuming. I rang up my manager and he agreed with me that there's a considerable amount of bull crap going on here and he would get someone to contact the owner. All in all, there isn't much we can do. So last week, again, I went home to find empty plastic cans, cigarette butts, and other crap strewn about across the side yard. This time, I didn't bother cleaning up the mess they'd left behind. And the more they came over, the more food leftovers and other crap they left behind, some of which had accidentally fallen into the pool, contaminating it with grease and dirt. One afternoon, the boys showed up again, but since the pool was too dirty to swim in, they started knocking on my back and front door repeatedly, but I ignored them. That night, the owner of the house rang me up to ask if I was home, and I said yes. He said great, and told me his brother would be coming over to drain and clean the pool, but he needed to connect a hose to the tap, which is in the back bathroom, which, you guess, is inside the house. I said no. They can all have the pool to themselves since nowhere does it say on the contract that I have full temporary ownership of the swimming pool or that he or any of his family members is not allowed to use it. He tried to reason with me, saying it would only take a few hours for his brother to clean and fill it and he'd be out of my face before I knew it was over, but I wouldn't budge. I recited to him the part of the lease agreement that says I have all the house to myself, which of course includes the downstairs bathroom. I even went on to warn him that if his brother or any of the family members tried to break in, I would make sure the police got involved. It's been more than a week now. They haven't shown up. The side yard and the pool are reeking of death, baking in the sun for days. I just close all the windows and turn on the AC. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.